got a calculator. Woo, we're ready. Okay, so if you read this question, it should feel familiar because we did questions just like this in the quadratics unit. So it says a water balloon is catapulted into the air so that its height in meters after t seconds is modeled by that quadratic equation. They want us to sketch the path of the water balloon. So what does the picture look like? You guys remember this? We've done this before. It looks like a parabola, right? So it's launched somewhere and it goes up in the air and then it comes down and hits the ground, right? So what should we do on our calculator before we even really get started? Plug it in. Oh. So we're plugging it into y equals, we want to graph it. Do you guys remember how we would figure out um, how big to make the graph? We looked at something on the calculator. Yeah, the window is what we're going to change, but what do we look at so that we know how big to make our window? No, window. The window is how you change it. How do we figure out how big our window should be? We look at the highest number. Yeah, you look at the table. So hit second graph. <laughs> So we know that negative seconds don't make sense, right? Our x value is our time. Our y value is the height. I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. My x value represents time. And that was in seconds. My y value represents height. And that's in meters. OK. So. On my window, my x values from negative 10 to positive 10 are probably just fine. If my y values only go from negative 10 to positive 10, I'm going to cut the graph off because my y max will not be big enough. So what y value should I have to make sure I can see everything? 40. At least 40, maybe a little bit bigger than that just to make sure it's not at the top of the screen. So my y max I'm going to change to 45 because I know that my graph goes up to probably about 40. And then when you hit graph, you should be able to see everything. Now we're picking up the food off the floor, right? All right. Hit graph. Perfect. All right. So the first question says, how high? Are they asking us to find a Y value or an X value? They're asking for a Y value. And what did they give us? One second. One, second. One second, and what variable does that go in for? X. X. Okay. So X equals one. How do we second plug trace. in any X value we want? <laughs> second trace, <laughs> number one. one. Number one lets you plug in any X value you want, and we want to plug in a one. You do have to answer these in sentences. Uh, you guys have such good memories. I'm impressed. So I'm going to go ahead and write down that the point that I just found was the point 124.5. And then what sentence am I going to write? The balloon is 124.5 meters high. The balloon is 24.5 meters high after one second. <laughs> All right, the next question says, for how long? So are they asking to solve a y value or an x value? X. They want us to find some x values here. Are we still listening back there? For how long is the balloon more than 30 meters high? So what letter is the 30 meters high? Y. y. Okay. Now this is the tricky one. This is the one a lot of students are going to forget. How do we do this one? Second Not second trace. This is like the only one where we don't do second trace. You put it in the Y, put it in the y equals. So they gave us a Y, so we're going to hit the Y equals button. And we're going to go down to Y2 and put 30. I remember this. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, this one doesn't need left bound, right bound. So we are going to do second trace now. What what in the picture are we looking for? Intersection. The intersection. So we're going to do second trace, wow. and the intersection is number five. So <clears throat> if you guys remember, you don't have to get your cursor right on top of the intersection. You just have to be closer to one intersection than the other. So I can see my cursor's down here. It's closer to the left one, so I'm just going to press enter, 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 and it will find the left intersection for me. <coughs> yep, second trace number five. And I'm going to write here y2 equals 30. So we're making sure that we keep really good notes just in case we forget how to do something later. Because what do I always ask you if you struggle with the problem? I say, where's your notes? So make sure your notes are real good. All right, so I'm going to write down that first point. And we are going to have to... Um, in a second, we're going to have to subtract some numbers. So that means I'm not going to round this point yet. I'm going to write down as many decimals as I can. So that was my first intersection. I wrote down all the decimals that I could see on my screen. And now I'm going to do second trace. And which one am I going to use this time? <laughs> Still number five, yep. And I'm just going to move my cursor over. I don't have to get it right on top of the intersection. I just have to be closer to the right intersection than the left one. And once I'm closer to that one, I can press enter, 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 and it will find it for me. All right, so that second intersection is 4.154364167. Yeah, I am in a second. So how do we answer the question? We have two answers. How do we use those two to correctly write a sentence with an answer that makes sense? For how long is the balloon more than 30 meters high? You subtract them. So at 1.36 seconds is when it started being 30 meters high, and then it was above 30 meters for a little bit, and then it came back down, and at 4.2 seconds, that's when it stopped being 30 meters high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these numbers, and this is why we wrote all the decimals, because we want to round our decimals at the end of the problem. We don't want to round our decimals in the middle of the problem. So I'm using all these decimals so that I don't round too early. And now that means that I can go ahead, when I write this answer down, I can go ahead and round to three decimal places. If you were doing two, you're right, it would have been 80. I don't know if any of these say, none of these say how many decimals, so we're going to go ahead and do three. We'll do three decimal places for each problem, okay? All right, so what do I write for my sentence? At 30. It took 2.7. So the balloon is more, is more is, is more than 30 meters high for about 2.799 seconds. No. Yeah, why did I say seconds, not meters? Because it's, it's time, we were finding a time. Okay, so the balloon is more than 30 meters high for about 2.799 seconds. All right, how do we find the maximum height of the balloon? We're going to do second trace. Uh, four. Number four. So I'm writing it on my notes just in case I forget later. Second trace number four, and it's asking me the question left bound. What do I need to do? Uh, go to the, to the left. Yeah, so my maximum is somewhere up here, so I need my cursor to be on the left side of that mountaintop. Okay, so left bound anywhere over here. It doesn't have to be exactly where mine is. So left bound. I pressed enter, and now it's saying right bound. What do I do now? Go on the right side, right side. Go on the right side of the mountaintop. Okay. Now it says guess, is that the answer? No. No, the guess is always stupid. 
One more time. All right, so the maximum point I got was 2.755 and then 39.594. The question said, what is the maximum height? So were they asking for an x coordinate or a y? Why, how do you know? Because it's height and the y in the problem was height. Okay, so the maximum height of the balloon is Why did I say that it was about that high? Because well, that's a rough estimate. It's a rough estimate. I rounded. The decimals aren't perfect. Yeah. And to be honest, our answer is probably not super accurate because we didn't take into account like wind resistance. Yeah. Other choreos. Yeah, yeah. Those other fancy things you learn about in science. Yeah. All right. The next question says, when will the balloon burst as it hits the ground? So what are we looking for? X-intercept, right? We're looking for this one down here. So I'm going to do second trace. And then which one am I doing? Two. Two. All right. Now I am feeling lazy. I can see that my answer is somewhere between like 2 and 10. Would you guys agree with that? My answer is between 2 and 10? Yeah. So yeah. for left bound, I'm going to type 2. I'm going to press enter. And then for right bound, I'm going to press 10 and press enter. And enter one more time. And I didn't even have to do the right bound, left bound because I typed in my numbers for it. Yeah, and I got the E. What does the E mean? It means 0. It really means 0. Okay. Now, how would you find like the maximum? Like, how many seconds it took to get to the maximum amount? So, the if it says if it asks the question, how long did it take to get to that maximum height? Yeah. Then this same point would give us the answer. We would just use the x coordinate instead of the y coordinate. So the balloon will burst. As it hits the ground, right. at about 5.598 seconds. That's a very heavy balloon. I mean, that's kind of a long time in the air, right? Yeah, it is. Six seconds? All right. So it says an open box, right? That's what we were just saying, a box with no lid. An open box from a rectangular base is made from a piece of cardboard. And they tell us that that piece of cardboard is 18 inches by 28 inches. And to make that box, they cut a square from each corner. and they turn up the sides. And we do not know the length of the squares, the side lengths, so I'm gonna label each of those as X. Yep, those are all little X's. I'm not sure what those lengths are. But I know that they're all the same, because they said <coughs> cutting out a square from each corner. So if the original width was 18, 18 minus two. Mm -hmm. so if the original width was 18 and I cut off an X from each side, then the new width is going to be 18 minus X from the left side minus X from the right side, and the new width is 18 minus 2X. And do the same thing with the length. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing with the length. So the original length is 28. So we have 28, we subtract x from the top, we subtract x from the bottom, 
and that makes our new length 28 minus 2x. And then when we fold up those flaps, our height is x, 1x. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm going to remind myself that x represents the length, side length, of the cut out square. It's good to remind yourself what your variables mean because if you see a problem where you maybe haven't worked with it before or they ask you a question you've never answered before, if you know what the variable means, you can think through the problem and still answer the question even if you didn't already practice it 15 times in class. Okay? So the higher, once you start going into these upper level math classes, we start to throw more problems at you where it's like we might have never practiced this before, but you're capable of doing it, you just have to think about it. Because by the time you get to calculus, if you choose to do that, you do problems like that all the time. We've never done it before, but now I expect you to do it. Okay. The higher up in math you go, the more they expect you to think as you do the problems. So x represents the length of the cutout square. Now they're as asking us to write a function. So they're saying the volume in terms of x. That's what this notation means, the volume in terms of x. So that means that when we are doing this in the calculator, the y coordinate represents the volume. I'm going to go ahead and write that up there so I don't forget. The y coordinate is always going to represent the volume since we're saying v equals. And then they want us to write length, width, height. So what should I write for length? Okay. And then width? And then height? X. Now, we are going to type this into our calculator because we're going to let the calculator do the rest of the work for us. You do not have to FOIL anything. Your calculator can handle it just like that. Yep. So I'm going to clear everything that I typed before and I'm just going to put everything in these parentheses so it looks exactly the same as what is on my paper. So we're graphing it, right? <laughs> and we want to be able to see everything, right? So how do we figure out how big our window should be? We look at the table. Now here, um, when we do projectile problems, an x value between negative 10 and 10 is usually pretty good. Here we're going to have to think about what our x values could be. So our x values represent the squares that are cut out, right? Are negative x values going to make sense? No. So now we have to think about, so we don't really need more negatives in our window, um, but we got to think about what positive values we want. So if, yeah, if you had a positive value of x where x is 9, would that make sense for the problem? Would it make sense though? It's as big as you could get, right? Because if you cut out a nine inch square from the corner on each side, then your box is like gone, right? You have no more width to your box left. So we know here that if we have a window where the X's go from negative 10 to positive 10, that's plenty big. It's too big, but we don't necessarily need to make it small. We just know it's plenty big. So now we want to look at the Y values that we can see between zero and 10, because we know that that's about as big as those X values could go, it was up to 10. So what Y values are you guys seeing? 800 is the biggest one. Yeah, and then it goes down. Okay, 800 is the biggest one. So for my window, how should I change my window? Yeah, at least make it 800. Now for me, I don't like to have, um, I like to give myself some extra space. I'm gonna put 1,000. The reason I like to do that is because I hate it when my maximum is at the very top of the screen. It makes it harder for me personally to feel like I can find my maximum. The other thing is I don't like it when my x-axis is at the bottom of the screen because if I need to find an x-intercept, that makes it hard for me to find the x-intercept. So now that my y-max is 1,000, I'm going to change my y-min to negative 200. And I'm only doing that because I don't want my x-axis at the very bottom of the screen. I want it to be up a little bit. And again, that's something you can kind of play with the numbers to see which makes the screen that you feel more comfortable with. So now if you hit graph, you should be able to see everything pretty well. 
And we don't care about this other part of the graph over here and over here because that has a negative volume. And that does not make sense for our problem. We should not have negative volumes for a box. That's weird, right? Okay. So the first question says, what is the volume? Are we solving for an x value or a y value? Yeah, so what is the volume? We're solving for a y value. That means they gave us an x value. What x value did they give us? 3. They want us to plug in 3. All right, so how do we plug in 3? Second trace. Number 1. Plug in x equals 3. Okay. So I have the point 3, comma 792. How do I answer the question? So if a three inch square is cut out, the volume is 792 inches cubed. Perfect. Okay. What is the volume if an eight inch square is cut out? What do I do there? You enter a second. Second trace, one, then enter eight. Mm -hmm. So again, they're asking for the volume. So this time I'm going to type eight in and see what my new volume is. So if, um, if an eight inch square is cut out, the volume is 192 inches cubed. Okay, you move back a little. Yep, sorry. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense if you cut out a much larger square then you have less stuff to make a box with. Yeah. All right, what if you have a 10 inch square cut out? How are It'd we going to do that? It would be negative, yeah. Yeah, negative. So does it make sense to no. cut out a 10 inch square? No. Does it make sense to have a negative volume? No. No. Yeah. So these are answers that in math we would call extraneous solutions. Mathematically, I can solve for it, but in the context of the problem, it makes no sense. Okay? So here, um, I'm going to say if a 10 inch square is cut out, the volume is negative 160 inches cubed, which makes no sense. can't cut out a 10 inch square. There's not enough material for that. ready for the next question? <laughs> All right, it says, for what value of x is the volume the largest? Where on the calculator screen are we going to look for the largest volume? Oh, um, yeah, the maximum right at the top, right? The volume is the y-coordinate. 
we want the biggest y coordinate we can find. So the biggest y coordinate is at the max. Would you do the thing across? Or so we're going to do second trace. How do we find the top? Five. Number, that's intersect, right? Four. Number four. We want the maximum. I was so close. You were very close. Can I just take to the top? I got eight or eight. Yeah, you might. That sounds about right because we figured the top was about. So left bound, right bound. Yep, 808. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't do What'd you do? This is the top. So if you if you just traced it to the top, you probably got close to the exact value, but you probably wouldn't have gotten your decimals right. Yeah, I got Yeah. So we want to do left bound, right bound, so we get the actual. Okay. All right. So we can answer the question: For what value of x is the volume the largest? Right. What's the answer to that question? For what value of x is the volume the largest? 3.571, right? That's the answer to that question. What are the dimensions of the box with the largest volume? What do they mean when they're asking for dimensions? Like the outside. Length, width, and height. They're asking for the length, width, and height. So the length was 28 minus 2x. The width was 18 minus 2x. The height was just x. So what do we have to do to find the length, width, and height of plug this box? In. Plug it in. Now, when we plug something in, we don't want to round in the middle of the problem. We want to round at the end of the problem. That means that all the decimals on my screen need to get plugged in. We only round at the very end. So when I find the length, I'm going to be typing into my calculator 28 minus 2 times 3.5706003. I use all the decimals I can. 18 minus 2 times 3.5706003. Now the height, I'm going to go ahead and round. Why am I rounding the height when I didn't round the other two? So if you look at it, does it make sense why I wouldn't round it? Or why I did round it, I mean? Oh, because it's just X. Because it's just X. It's done. Yeah. Okay. So the other ones, I am going to plug in all those decimals. What do I mean by this squiggly equal sign? About. About. I'm telling the person looking at my paper that I rounded. I love my Think they're fun, squiggly equal signs? Yeah. Okay. And then, so I'm going to say the dimensions of the box are. 20.859 inches by, say it again? I rounded it. I So I didn't round it here, but then when I wrote my final answer again, I rounded it. You're looking at how you round it up and something like that? No, you had to use decimals. So by 10.859 inches by 3.571 inches. Actually, and I should have said largest box. Let me go ahead and put that right there. <coughs> so those are the dimensions of the largest box. I thought I said diameter. More of largest volume, I guess, of the box. <coughs> the dimensions. Wait, the dimensions of the box with the largest volume. However you phrase that. Uh, the math teacher in me is coming out as opposed to the English teacher in me, which is not very strong. All right, so the dimensions of the largest volume of the box, the largest volume possible, I don't know. Uh, the largest volume is 
0.746 inches cubed. There we go.